Dear students, in this video we are going to discuss about the comparison of AC and DC transmission systems. In the previous video we have discussed about HVDC transmission, how HVDC transmission is achieved, what is its importance and we have also discussed about the early discoveries of the transmission systems either it is AC and DC in terms of a global level and as well as the Indian scenario. So in this video we will be discussing the AC and DC transmission system which is better and why and which can be preferred in which conditions all those things we will be discussing in this video. So let us start with the factors influencing the selection of transmission systems. <music> factors influencing the selection of transmission systems any power system planner should consider the following for selecting dc or ac transmission systems the first one comes the economics of transmission which is nothing but the cost of transmission cost of transmission involves lot of factors that we will see in a separate video so next video we'll be discussing about the economics of transmission and next comes the technical performance and feasibility whether any transmission either ac or dc whether they are technically good it holds good for all the condition and third one is reliability we will discuss in detail about the reliability as well in the forthcoming videos and the main important factor is that the nature of the power system necessitates the expansion in future as the power demand is increasing so the system planner should account for the future planning as well any power system planner will not plan for the today's demand he will always plan for the future demand so this power system is growing indefinitely so demand is increasing day by day so any power system planner should consider all these factors apart from that he should consider the future trend also and then he should plan so on these factors we are going to see all, all through this video we are going to see a overview about what is an ac transmission system and how it is better and what are all the disadvantages in ac transmission system and then we will be discussing about the advantages of hvdc transmission system and disadvantages as well and what are all the alternative solutions for those disadvantages of hvdc transmission system to start with the advantages of hvac transmission that means high voltage ac transmission so the first one is transformer obviously transformer so voltage transformation is possible in hvac transmission which is not at all possible in hvdc transmission so with the help of transformer we can either step up or step down the voltage already we have discussed it in the previous video the generated voltage will be in the order of 11 kilovolt or 33 kilovolt but when it is getting transmitted we cannot transmit in the same voltage level we always know we will be stepping up the voltage of 200s of kilovolts so here transformer became one of the important factor for the advantage of hvac transmission and second important factor is the current interruption current interruption is easy within hvac transmission system with the help of circuit breakers and all the other advancements and third one is easy conversion into mechanical energy to electrical energy and vice versa and this is the reason why we prefer ac generation always we will prefer ac generation it is easy to convert uh, any mechanical energy into electrical energy in ac form especially conversion into dc form is somewhat complex and in but when it comes for economical way you will always prefer ac and the next important factor is the frequency frequency is the system wide control signal so any ac transmission system will depend on the frequency if frequency is change then obviously the other factors will also come into the picture if frequency is maintained then all the other factors will not have much effect and the last important factor of the advantage of ac system is that it can be used in mesh networks so these are all the advantages of high voltage ac transmission system and next comes the disadvantages so when it comes for disadvantages when we are speaking about long distance transmission hvac transmission is very complex we cannot use this hvac transmission for a long distance transmission uh, the reason behind that uh, issue is coming in the next points so the next point is difficult to use cables already at 100 kilometer high reactive power consumption is there so and reactive power loss is there because of reactive power loss stability problem will come into the picture and the current carrying capacity reduces and we have issues like skin effect and ferranti effect 
so because of skin effect the effective resistance of the conductor increases obviously you know when the resistance increases current carrying capacity reduces and in turn the power capacity also power transfer capability also and also we have problem of ferranti effect in ac transmission you know about ferranti effect you might have studied in previous courses uh, like the ferranti effect is the increase in the receiving end voltage than the sending end voltage that means the receiving end voltage will be somewhat higher than the sending end voltage again that is an issue and power flow control is very much complex in terms of hvac transmission system and we can see the corona loss is also one of the significant factor in the hvac transmission system all these factors made an important way to consider to be considered for the hvdc transmission systems so let us start with the advantages of hvdc transmission systems the first one is reduced transmission losses so when it comes for losses how losses are less in hvdc transmission systems we will discuss in detail in the next video but i can share one or two points which are required as of now so when it comes for reduced transmission losses i can say one important factor in ac i'll be using at least three conductors but in hvdc i'll be using at least only two conductors so the basic factor is one conductor is less when one conductor is less that one conductor's losses will be less then obviously the transmission losses will be less and all the other factors will also join together for reducing the transmission losses and next important factor is the limiting the transfer of fault current limiting the transfer of fault current is possible only in the hvdc transmission it is not at all possible in hvac transmission and it is very complex and third important factor is that interconnection of systems using long length cable in particular while crossing sea water so when we are crossing sea water we can interconnect the systems with the help of hvdc transmission system it is not possible in case of hvac transmission system because of the factors that we have discussed in the previous slide that means the reactive power loss beyond 100 kilometers we will have reactive power loss and reactive power compensation should be there and all the other factors will not be suitable for the interconnection of systems crossing the sea water and next one is it is suitable for bulk power transmission so ac is considered for short distance transmission as well as it is considered for some low power transmission also it is not suitable for bulk power transmission so obviously whenever there is a need for bulk power transmission always we will prefer hvdc transmission systems and next important factor is that interconnection of systems operating at different frequencies this is one of the important advantage of hvdc transmission because asynchronous ties is not at all possible in hvac already we have discussed in the last slide frequency is the basic control signal for hvac transmission so when i have two systems of different frequencies it is not possible for me to connect the two systems through ehvac transmission lines but in case of hvdc links it is very easy and it is possible for us to connect the two systems of different frequencies and this is the reason why we have not interconnected the grids previously please recall students in the last video we have discussed about the advantage of the hvdc link and we have discussed its role on interconnecting the grids in our country especially so there all the grids have might have different frequencies so we can we have not connected it because of the ehvac transmission line after the advent of hvdc links because of this possibility this important factor we have uh, used the hvdc link for the interconnection of systems operating at different frequencies and next important advantage is that damping out of oscillations and improving the stability margins when embedded in weak ac systems of low short circuit ratio and last important advantage is that hvdc transmission is most useful in areas requiring crossing of long waterways like crossing a sea to feed an island through submarine cables so when i want to power an island uh, and we need to supply then here hvd links uh, hvdc links are comparatively much more useful so let us discuss about the disadvantages so obviously hvdc transmission has also some disadvantages so first disadvantage is the high cost dc breakers so dc breakers are costly obviously it was costly and now we have changed in the next slide we'll be discussing how we are overcoming this disadvantage so let us consider only a disadvantages first and second important factor is that we the inability to use transformers to change voltage levels so it is not at all possible for us to use transformer for a hvdc transmission so increase or decrease in voltage is not possible 
So that is one of the important disadvantage which we cannot change and which we cannot overcome as well. And third important factor is the high cost conversion equipment. We know we are using conversion equipments in the sending end and as well as in the receiving end. We are using the rectifier in the sending end and inverter in the receiving end. These rectifier stations and the inverter stations are of huge cost and that is why we are using this HVDC transmission only for long distance transmission not for short distance transmission because the cost factor will not be viable to use and the fourth important point is generation of harmonics harmonics will be generated so when it comes for harmonics obviously we need to filter out the harmonics otherwise it will affect the consumer as well as it will affect the generating stations so we need to use ac and dc filters for uh, the reduction in this harmonics and finally we have some complexity of control when it comes for hvdc transmission systems we should have specialized equipments for the control of hvdc transmission systems so these are all the disadvantages which we can see in terms of a hvdc transmission system and advancements to overcome the limitations the first advancement is the development of dc breakers so with the advent of dc breakers the high cost dc breakers were no more an issue it was clear and next important factor is that advancement is that the modular construction of thyristor valves increase in ratings of thyristor cells that make up a valve and 12 pulse operation of converters this we will discuss in the second chapter 6 pulse operation 12 pulse operation and it comes for 12 pulse operation it is easy for us to control it is easy for us to smooth out and we will discuss in detail in the next coming uh, forthcoming videos and next one is the use of metal oxide gapless arresters and application of digital electronics and fiber optics in control of converters so when you compare the last slide and this slide almost all the disadvantages uh, have been addressed except only one which is the need for transformer which is not possible in the hvdc and in next slide we will be dis comparing directly based on some factors what are all the factors that will be characteristics that are required for a particular transmission and we will be comparing it with the hvdc link and also ehvac link and we will also decide whether hvdc is preferred or ehvac is preferred HVDC refers to high voltage direct current transmission and EHVAC refers to extra high voltage AC link. So uh, as it is the only new thing used, I am just clarifying it. The first characteristic that we will be discussing is power transfer ability. So in HVDC link, the power transfer ability is high and it is limited by the temperature rise. Only based on the temperature it is limited, not on the other factors. But in case of EHVAC link, we can see that power transferability is less and it is limited by the power angle and as well as the reactance. So here criterion for preference is that HVAC link is preferred for higher power transfer things. So when it requires to be bulk power transmission, please recall students, in the previous slides we have discussed that AC is not preferred for bulk power transmission and DC is preferred for bulk power transmission here comes the reason for that so the power transfer ability is high for hvdc so for bulk power transmission i will be using the hvdc link for normal power for low power transmission we will be always preferring the ac links okay and second important characteristics is the control of power flow so the control of power flow in hvdc link is fast accurate and bidirectional but in case of EHVAC link, the control of power flow is slow and difficult. So obviously HVDC is preferred. And next important factor is frequency disturbance. When it comes for frequency disturbance in HVDC link, the frequency disturbance is reduced. But in EHVAC link, you cannot get rid of this frequency disturbance. It will be always there as it is an AC transmission and AC systems on the other two sides so obviously the frequency disturbance will be communicated between the two systems so again when you have an issue of frequency disturbance between two, two systems always it is better to prefer hvdc and fourth important factor is the system support the system support is excellent and power flow is quickly modulated for damping the oscillations but in each in ehvac link it is very poor system support is poor oscillations continue for a long time so when oscillations continue for a long time it results in the problem in the stability of the system and again hdc is better in this case as well and next important factor is transient performance so in case of a transient hdc links 
works effectively and it is excellent but in case of ehvac link it is poor so if you have a system which will have a very high prone towards the transients then you should prefer only hvdc and next factor is that fault levels so fault levels in hvdc link remains unchanged after the interconnection but in case of ehvac link the fault level gets added up after the interconnection because of the interconnection itself the fault will create it will be created in hvdc link but in case of hvdc link it will be comparatively it remains unchanged so again when fault levels are high hvdc is better to use and power swings when it comes for hvdc link the power swings are damped out quickly but in ehvac link it is not possible to damp out the power swing so it will continue for a longer time so again hvdc is better when it comes for power swings and the next characteristics is interconnection already we have discussed a lot about this two asynchronous systems of different frequencies can be interlinked with the help of an hvdc link so obviously when it comes for interconnection hvdc link asynchronous interconnection is possible but in ehvac link only synchronous interconnection is possible so again when it comes for asynchronous interconnection we have to prefer only hvdc not hvac and next one is frequency conversion so when i have two systems of different frequencies then i can use hvdc link but ehvac link i cannot use because the frequency should be same on both the systems then only i can go for ehvac link and next one is cascade tripping of ac systems can be avoided in the hvdc link but in ehvac link it is likely to happen so again hvdc is preferred and next one is spinning reserves of ac network the spinning reserves in ac network of ac network is reduced in terms of usage of hvdc link but in case of ehvac link the spinning reserves are used are utilized so again when you want to reduce the spending uh, reserve obviously hvdc should be preferred and the finally we will be discussing about the transient stability limit the transient stability limit is very high for hvdc link and it is limited only by the thermal capacity of the equipment not by any other factor but in case of an ehvac link it is less than half of the thermal limit of the line conductor so obviously transient stability limit is comparatively less than the hvdc link so again hvdc is preferred on all these factors we can see based on these factors we can justify that hvdc links are comparatively better than ehvac link but on certain conditions we will discuss about those conditions in the uh, next video the next video will be discussing about the economics when it comes for economics when it comes for cost when it comes for technical performance in some cases we will prefer hvdc in some cases it is much better to stay back with the hvac itself because hvac high voltage ac transmission systems we cannot avoid it just like that we have to rely on hvac for some cases but we have to, for long distance transmission obviously there is no question we have discussed a lot in this complete video so all the factors have uh, supported hvdc links hvdc transmission systems for a long distance transmission but when it comes for short distance transmission and where the power transfer value is very much less then we cannot go for hvdc because of its uh, high installation costs and high operation costs all the other things and losses uh, all the other factors will be supporting the hvac links so we will discuss in details in the upcoming videos and that's all for this video students thank you so much for your listening and if you have any queries you can obviously ping me up thank you